Universidad Politécnica Metropolitana de Hidalgo. Licenciatura en Comercio Internacional y Aduanas. Base de datos. Now, we are going to do an exercise. In this exercise, we are going to get some numbers about imports and exports. All this data was gotten from the INEGI website. And you also are able to get it if you want. As you know, we have exports and imports. And the balance means exports minus imports. So if we have a positive balance, it means that in that period of time, we got more exports than imports. Or if we got a negative balance, it means that we got more imports than exports. Using functions, we need to get the maximum and minimum balance, also its average. Having the max and mean balance, we are going to get the range. Also, we need to get the standard deviation and the variance. Then, we also have to check how many periods we got more exports and how many periods we got more imports. Then, we have to get, based on the presidential period, the same data about the maximum and minimum balance per each presidential period, its average, range, the standard deviation, variance, and also how much periods we got more exports and imports. So let's get it done. In the workbook I sent you, you are able to see all the INEGI data since 1993 to February 2020. Also, you have another spreadsheet with the presidential period since Carlos Salinas de Gortari to Andres Manuel López Obrador. First, I would like to format as a table this data about the presidential period. I can select the data, then format as table and I can choose the best. And we are getting the format as table form. So we have to check the references to the range for the table and if the table has or not headers. In this case, it has. The most important part is that we can rename this table as a range with a defined name. So I will be renaming it as presidential period. And we can check it is now done. We created this defined name. Also, since these are original data, I prefer to work with a copy of this. By this way, if I break something, I can come back to the original data. We are going to have two columns about the period and balance. And we are ready to copy. And paste. Also, I would like to format it as a table. If you can see, there are no empty rows in all the range. So I can just select the first cell of the range, then format as table, 
and we are going to get the format as table form. And by default, it will be selecting all the range. I will be renaming it as balance. We have to get the maximum, minimum, average, range, standard deviation, and variance. Also, we have to get the number of periods with more export and with more import. And we can set a format. Now, almost all the functions are statistic functions, and we can get them in the function library. In this case, we can see statistical functions in the More Functions button. We have the min and max functions. Clicking in max, then we can select the range and click in OK. So, if you check the function, we are calling the max function, then balance, which is the defined name for the table, then the column name. So, we got more defined names and it makes the function more understandable. Let's do the same with the minimum value. So we are going to work with the min function. Get the min value from the balance table in the balance column. And we got it done. Also, we are going to work with the average. I will insert the function with the insert function button. So, the category is statistical, and I'm going to work with the average function. And I have to insert the range. It is the balance table in the balance column. And it is done. The range is the maximum minus the minimum value. For the standard deviation, we also are able to insert it from the function library commands. As we can see, Excel has three functions for standard deviation, and we have to choose the right one that we want to work with for this example. As you can see, there is a tooltip which tells us about how the calculation is done. So the first one with dot p calculates the standard deviation based on the entire population. The second with s estimates the standard deviation based on a sample. 
it ignores logical values and text. And the third, a standard deviation based on a sample, including logical values and text. All those values, when they are false, return the value zero, or when the value is true, it returns one as value. So take care with these options. And the four, we have standard deviation, PA, which calculates the standard deviation based on an entire population, including logical values and text. Also, if the text or logical value is false, then we got a zero as data. Or if it is true, we get one as value. So, as we can see, we have the entire population because we have all the periods that we are going to work with. It is not a sample. And all the values are numeric. So we are not going to work with text or logical values. Because of that, we need to work with the standard deviation dot p function. From the same data range. Table balance and column balance. Now for variance. we have the same case, var.p, which calculates based on the entire population, var s, which estimates variance based on a sample, with a, which estimates the variance based on a sample, including logical values and text, and pa, which calculates the variance based on the entire population, including logical values and text. As we did before, we are going to work with the var.p function. And we are going to calculate it based on the table balance, column balance. Woo, we got a big value here. I hope you can read exponential notation. In order to know the number of periods with more exports, we can work with the count functions. We have some different count functions. The most basic count will be counting cells with a value we have in a range. In this case, our range is the table balance, column balance. By that, we know that we have 326 rows, and each row means a month. We are going to work with another count function. In this case, we are going to count How many values satisfy a condition? This condition should mean to be a positive value. So the right function to work with is count if. In this function, we have to pass first the range, which is table balance, column balance. In this case, the criteria will be a condition 
in this condition, I will be writing it as greater than zero. If we read, it should be balance greater than zero. And we got it. And it is almost the same for import. We are going to work with the count if function. The range will be the table balance in the column balance. But now the criteria will be less than zero. And we can read it as balance less than zero. And if we want to read all the function, it will be count if balance less than zero, which means count how much cells have a value where the value is less than zero. 230 and 5. If we want to check the sum, just in order to be sure that it is taking all the rows, we can select the cells and verify the sum value. And it is right. As we can see, all the info is in millions of dollars. We can change to a better common number in order to read better all these numbers. I would prefer to work with the comma style, but also you can work with the accounting number format based on Spanish or English style. And also for all these values that we got, we can set it the same. And now, it is more easy to understand. And we got the first part done. So the best is to have a general information about the formulas that Excel has integrated in the function library. By this way, we can get an idea about which calculus we can do. Now, we have to think what does each data mean? What means that we have 3 million as maximum versus 3 million as minimum. What means that the average is 500,000 with a big range, with a big standard deviation, and with a very big variance? What do you think? Is it well to have a big variance? Is it well to have more imports than exports almost in the 30% period? To get all the numbers is so easy. To think about them is the difficult part. And to make a suggestion about how to change it for the future, in fact, is more hard. Now we have to get all this data for each presidential period. When we work with data, the best is to have all the data sorted. And as you can see, the sort column is period, which is well. 
And in the presidential spreadsheet, we have all the presidential periods from Carlos Salinas de Gortari to Andres Manuel López Obrador. And you can see it is in a format number where the first four digits mean the year, then the last two numbers means the month when they came into the Mexico presidents. And the same for the ending, for the last period that they were in the presidents. Also, all of them are sort based on the beginning month. And in our balance spreadsheet, we have the period in text form. So we need to convert this period as numbers where the first four digits mean the year and the last two digits mean the month. By this way, we will be able to check if a period is between the beginning or ending for a specific president. First, let's work on the period. I will be inserting two columns, one for the year and another for the month. 